so absolutely crappy lighting here, but I was just sitting here um, getting ready to take some pictures and then also shoot some what I call b-roll so the things that I show you guys where I like close-ups of products and things like that so I was getting ready to shoot a bunch of those uh, for some upcoming videos and then I had an Ulta order show up actually it was a second of two Ulta orders because I got two 20% off coupons from them one in the mail and one via email and then I also had saved up an absolute crap ton of points so I kind of went a little ham buying a bunch of new makeup and so so I thought let's do an impromptu Ulta haul. I am gonna film these products. I have not tried them yet. I'm gonna swatch them and then I'm gonna probably put them into my everyday makeup drawer. So if there's anything you see here that you are interested in me giving more detailed reviews on, let me know down in the comments below. I will be happy to add it to my everyday makeup drawer next month or do a separate test and review on it. But Hey, I figured I'm gonna swatch these products. I'm gonna take some pictures of them. So maybe you guys would like to see what I got. We're gonna take some photos. We're gonna do some swatches. I'm not gonna lie. It's one of my favorite things to do in the evenings is to sit upstairs and swatch makeup because, well, just because. We're gonna drink some rosé. It's pink. And yeah, that's the evening. Oh, if you guys, actually, you know what? Let me show you kind of how I have everything set up because you might be interested in that. So this is my little loft and workroom um, upstairs. Our second floor has kind of an open room that the bedrooms come off of. And then right now, I actually just, when I'm taking pictures of things, I set up a card table out here, scoot a bunch of stuff over, throw up these soft boxes, which were actually not very expensive. I will try and find the kit that I got off of Amazon. It actually came with all three of these soft boxes uh, for pretty cheap. Um, and then what you guys are used to seeing when I film is actually this background. So when I go and actually film a video, I basically scoot all this stuff down so that this bookshelf becomes my backdrop and then the lights are now fit the lights face towards it um so that is kind of the setup here so here are the products that i got oh gosh that's a lot <laughs> um and then this is kind of my usual setup so i actually have my camera facing down on a tripod that I don't even touch. And then it actually runs into my computer. And when you buy a Canon, they actually have something called the utility app, which is great. And it actually allows me to take photos directly from my laptop. So I can see what I'm doing here. I can adjust all of the camera settings here. I can see microphone if I'm doing any sort of recording. And then as I like pick up and move things, so you can actually see that on the computer. So I really love this setup. And I also, when I'm filming um, and you're looking at me, this is what I'm seeing on my screen. So I can see if I'm in frame, if I'm in focus. Uh, this is just a really great, utility that Canon puts out specifically that works so well with the cameras. And then I'm trying something new. I got a new microphone um, just because I've really not been happy with the audio lately and I've had to do a lot of tinkering on the computer before I've been posting. So I broke down and got a new mic. This is the first time I'm using it tonight. So right now I'm recording on my iPhone and then we're gonna switch to the um, this new microphone here in a second and we'll see if it makes any difference. So, okay, there was your little impromptu behind the scenes setup. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I've got and uh, let's do some swatches. Okay, so we've just switched to my Canon camera and the new microphone. So I'm guessing there's probably gonna be a difference in audio. You're now seeing what was sitting in the table in front of me and all of the makeup that I got. So I just kind of wanted to show you an overview of everything I picked up and make sure and let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you are interested in seeing more details of once I've had a chance to play with it for a few weeks. Uh, happy to film either a haul update or just focus in on a few products if you guys are interested. Okay, so I'm gonna move all of this off to the side and then kind of bring in items one by one so that you can see kind of what I got. I'm also gonna apologize because the hand that you're gonna see here is my right hand and I've been breaking down boxes and trying to organize our basement a little bit. And as a result, I've got like war wounds from boxes all over my hand, so that's fun. All right, so. Let's move all of this off to the side and let's go through these one by one. We're gonna start with the eyeshadow palettes first. I picked up the Shan XO, the Remix palette. I never got her original palette because I wasn't in love with having lipsticks on the other side. I'm just not a lip palette kind of girl. But the new Remix palette actually has shades on both sides. So you've got these pinky purple uh, peachy shades on this side. And then if you flip it, 
You actually have uh, different shades on the backside that are more neutrals. You've got a couple duochromes. So I really love this palette. I think it's really compact now and has really great shades and can you can make some really interesting eye looks from it. So you have a mirror on both sides of the palette, which I think is also a very nice touch. I think the colors are really cool. I am uh, definitely excited to play around with this guy. This is the Makeup Revolution palette. This is the Reloaded Iconic Division palette. This is clearly a dupe for the Subculture palette. So I didn't end up picking up the Subculture palette because I really didn't like what I saw from the reviews from a formula perspective but I was still really interested in the color. So I've since picked up two dupe palettes. I've picked up this one from Makeup Revolution and then I've picked up another from the Shop Hush website. And I wanna try both of them and compare my first impression after swatching both this one and the Shop Hush one side by side here and is that the Makeup Revolution one is just not quite as pigmented as the other, but I've not put them on my eyes yet. So I'm curious to see how I feel about these shadows once I've actually applied them on my eyes. I'm hoping I get the colors and just the unique eye looks that I think you can get out of the subculture palette without all of the hassle. Okay, so I did end up picking up two of the Stila liquid eyeshadows. One is their Glitter and Glow, and this is in the shade Diamond Dust. So that is Diamond Dust. And then I picked up the new Shimmering Glow. So this is more just like a metallic foiled liquid shadow. Um, so I picked up two of these because I wanted to play around with them a little bit. So this is kind of a clear one with a holographic shimmer in it. And then this is one of their new limited edition shimmer and glows. This is in the shade Boheme. And I really thought this color was beautiful. Let me give you a couple swatches of both of these. So this is Diamond Dust from Glitter and Glow. It's kind of a silver. It actually has, I don't know how well it's going to pick up, but it actually has kind of a holographic glitter through it, a true holographic, picks up lots of different dimension. This is the shade Boheme, and this is kind of a purpley, taupey, silvery color. I just thought it looked so pretty, and I'm really, really excited to play around with this formula. I have not tried any of them yet. Those are the two shades I picked up from Stila. I also wanted to try what was, I think, a drugstore version. This is from JCAT. This is out new. This is their holographic 3D eye topper. I got the shade Pinch Me Baby, so I was curious to see if this was going to be an alternative to the Stila glow, Glitter and Glows. Um, it doesn't appear to be quite as glittery as the Stila ones, but let's swatch it. Yeah, it looks like it might end up being slightly, I don't know, I don't wanna say patchy, but maybe. So the formula seems to remind me more of their Shimmer and Glow than their Glitter and Glow. It definitely has a duochrome sort of pinky rose gold shift to it. There we go, now you can see it. So if I can find a really cool liquid eyeshadow that gives a really interesting effect to the lid, I'm all for that. So I just realized I wasn't recording when I first opened this. This is from JCAT. This is their Prisma Metal Chrome Eye Mousse. This is new to their collection as well. I got the shade Champagne Wiz. It's a really pretty rose shade. I thought, given the packaging, it might actually be a little bit like the ColourPop shadows, but what I just said that wasn't recording was that this actually has a much thicker consistency. It kind of feels more like a frosting than a like ColourPop shadow, which feels a little lighter. So it's a little stickier, but that is what it looks like swatch. So I just swirled my finger in there a little bit and did one swipe like whoop right across my hand and look at how pigmented that is. That is stunning. I'm gonna let this set for a few minutes and see if it actually completely sets and is transfer proof the way that ColourPop and some of these other ones are, cause like this is set, that's not going anywhere at this point. So I'm curious to see if this one does the same thing. All right, so I've given this a few minutes to set and I still don't think this is one is completely set. I think it's been a couple minutes now and it's still, when I rub my finger across it, I'm getting a little bit off. So, I'm loving the color. I loved the application as far as how smooth and easily it went on, but I'm a little nervous that this is going to be one that doesn't set well and creases, but hey, you never know until you actually put it on your eyes. So I will let you know. Okay, so the next product I got was actually a primer. I didn't pick up any foundations this go round, but I was interested in this. This is the Catrice Light Correcting Primer. It just comes in one shade, but on the website it says that it is a light reflecting liquid 
primer. You can add to your foundation for a subtle illuminating effect or apply alone for a highlighting glow. Can also be added to your body lotion for an all over glow. This is gonna end up being like the CoverFest custom cover drops and all the dupes that are coming out this spring. But uh, let's give this a whirl. It's got the same dropper, but it was interesting because it only came in one color. I don't know, it's different than all of the other drops that I've got that are all very metallic. This feels very lightweight and watery. So it's giving kind of a light sort of pearly champagne glow. It's very subtle though. I don't know, I'm gonna have to play around with this. It's definitely not strong enough to use as a highlighter, but I could definitely see this potentially being mixed in with foundations. The tone is really pretty. It's interesting. I'm not sure what I quite think of it yet. It's definitely different than all of the other sort of pigment drops or illuminating drops that are on the market that I've tried. So we'll see. So I picked up two shades of the new Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. I know people are really excited about this as an alternative to the Shape Tape Concealer. I am also very curious about them because I do really love the Shape Tape Concealer, but these are only $7, which is awesome. Plus it's Makeup Revolution, which means it's probably gonna go buy one, get one half off or 40% off like Ulta loves to do. I ended up getting the shade C1, which is described as for fair skin tones with neutral undertones. And then I also got the shade C3, which was for fair skins with pink undertones. C2 is fair skin with yellow undertones, and I don't usually love yellow undertones tones on my uh, under eyes so I thought these were two that I might want to give a whirl to. I first got these I actually pulled out my Tarte Shape Tape concealers. I have two of them and then I also pulled out my ColourPop concealers because I was curious to see how these compared um, just color wise and potentially formula wise. Also I have not worn these yet so I can't comment on how they are underneath my eyes but as you can see here, the shades are not exactly one for one. Um, the thing that kind of caught me the most off guard is that the shape tape, when it dries down, is actually several shades darker than the ColourPop one. I gave ColourPop a lot of crap for drying darker. But what you can see here from the image is that the tone of the Makeup Revolution doesn't really change. The tone of the ColourPop ones maybe darkens a little bit and the Tarte Shape Tape darkens a ton. But yeah, I'm really excited to play with these. Okay, a concealer I picked up after watching every single YouTuber in the world rave about in the best of 2017 is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I got the shade Chantilly, which is light one. I had gotten a sample of this. I had tried it under my eyes and I remember thinking it might be a little too dry for my under eyes, but I think it might be a really good concealer for spot correcting on my eyes or brightening or going around my nose when I've got some redness. And so I'm gonna definitely try it under my eyes as well, but I feel like it could have a lot of uses besides just that. Not that this really shows you much on my hand besides the tone. But anyway, I thought the tone was really pretty and I thought it was a color that would work well for me. So I'm excited to give this a whirl. Another product that definitely goes in the YouTube made me buy it category is the Becca Sunlit Bronzer. I heard everybody talk about how pretty these were and how effortlessly they blended on the skin. I kind of steered away from them just because I felt like they looked a little intense and like maybe too pigmented of a bronzer for somebody with fair skin like myself. Um, I did get the shade Bally Bronze, which I believe is the lightest shade that they do. It's beautiful packaging as usual from Becca. I liked the copper effect here. I was a little concerned that this might be a little too yellow on me. And then I played around with it in the store and then actually walked with the swatch into natural light to see what it would look like. And then I realized that the color wasn't quite as yellow as I thought it was gonna be. So let's swatch this just on my hand real fast. And this is one of those ones that, so my hand is so much darker than my face, but I think the tone is gonna be really pretty. It looks like a really nice satin bronzer. It doesn't look too yellow. It looks pretty neutral to me. I'm excited to play with this. I love a good satin bronzer. And from what everyone described, that's kind of what this is versus something super metallic. So yeah, I'm excited to play with this guy. So I did end up picking up three blushes because I have just been a blush junkie this last year. I don't know what my deal is, but I definitely wanted to try out this new Bare Minerals Gen Nude blush. And then I wanted to pick up another Clinique blush because I really do enjoy this formula. And then Catrice came out with these new strobing blushes that looked really pretty. So here is the Catrice strobing blush. I just thought this was so pretty. This is the shade Mrs. Summer Peach. I believe they had two other shades of this, maybe three, but I thought let's get a more neutral one. I like blushes like this because I feel like you can concentrate your 
brush in different areas and get slightly different tones. So let me do a little swatching here. Okay, so here are all the swatches. The first shade on the far left there is just the lightest shade in the blush, then the middle shade, and then the darkest shade to the right. And then the final shade, the fourth shade there is actually all of them swirled together. So I think this is a really pretty blush and it looks like it's gonna be a nice satin formula, which I love in blush form formats. So. Yeah, excited for this guy. This is the Gen Nude Blush from Bare Minerals. I was so excited to see that they were doing a whole line of nude-ish colored blushes. This is the shade Call Me Blush. Packaging's really pretty. It's got kind of a clear lid so you can see the color easily. And then this is just a really pretty natural sort of pinky mauve tone. What was really interesting to me though was the texture of this. It feels velvety, satiny, like it's just got this creamy softness to it that I just, I don't know if I've ever felt in a blush before. It also seems to be buildable. So just even with a finger swatch, it's not super intense pigmentation right out of the gate. So what it means is that I think it's gonna meld onto the skin. I'm guessing here, I've not worn this yet, but I think it's gonna meld onto the skin and just give this like amazing texture. I don't know, it just seems like it's gonna blend out really easily. I don't know, I'm building up the color here so you can really see it, but it's just a stunning color and it's unlike any other blush formula that I have ever tried before. So I'm really excited about this. They have some peachy shades. They have some more lighter neutral pinky shades. They've got some browns and some taupes. They've got a really interesting neutral range. I think this line is gonna get really popular on YouTube would be my guess. And then final blush is Ginger Pop from Clinique. I love these cheek pop blushes. I think they just last so long. The packaging is adorable. I love this like super luxe acrylic container and then this beautiful like flower shape in here. This is definitely sort of a warm peachy neutral shade. I have a couple other shades from them and this is one I've been coveting for a while. So let me give a quick swatch for you. And as you can see, this is a lot more pigmented right out of the gate than the Gen Nude one from Bare Minerals. So this is one where I definitely kind of go at it with a light hand, but uh, you can see it blends out really, really easily. So although I just did a really heavy swatch, it blended out beautifully on the skin. And it's one that I just feel like all these Clinique blushes, not only do they last, they really blend on the skin super easily. I never worry about them being patchy or sticking weird or streaking or anything like that. So, so really excited to have this in my collection. I think it's gonna be an absolutely stunning shade for spring. I Love You So Mochi palette from NYX. So this is a new formula for them and it's definitely a little spongy, not as much as ColourPop, but you can see there where I push my finger in, you definitely see a little bit of a divot. They had one other palette other than this, but I thought these shades were ones that I would potentially wear. Having swatched them once already, I'm a little concerned that there's gonna be more glitter in here than I typically like, but let me show you what I mean. So you've ended up with highlighters, one that's very bluish. The white shade is actually a blue shift. The gold shade actually is a peachy gold shift. And then the one in the middle that's pink is more of just a, I would say silvery pink shade that probably looks the most flattering. It's not picking up very glittery here on camera, but in the sunshine when I was swatching these, it did appear to have a little bit of glitter in it. I, this is a formula I don't know if I'm gonna like until I put it on my face. But I'm curious, whenever highlighters come out with a different formula than we've seen before, and that's certainly this, um, I always like to try them because I am fascinated by what chemists do to create makeup. So I'm excited to play around with this guy as well. Three products I picked up were lip products. I got a new liquid lipstick, a new regular lipstick, and then a new holographic glitter topper. So let's start with the liquid lipstick here. This is from Smashbox. This is their always on liquid lipstick. This is a shade that is exclusive to Ulta. This is the shade Fair Game. They launched several shades that are now exclusive to Ulta. So this just looked like a nude that was right up my alley. It wasn't super pink, it wasn't super orange, it wasn't super yellow, it just had a really nice neutral tone to it. And then it also wasn't super fair. I think it's one of the better liquid lipsticks that have come out on the market. There's the shade close up. So I am really hopeful that this is just gonna be one of my perfect nudes in a formula that I really, really enjoy. This is one of the Clinique 
Pop Matte Lipsticks. These have won all kinds of awards in magazines, and I've heard some people mention them, but I feel like Clinique is a brand that just doesn't get a ton of hype on YouTube in general. This is the shade 01 Blushing Pop. I've wanted to try these for a while. I think the packaging's really cute. It's got this sort of silver Clinique at the top and then this matte uh, base that's the color of the lipstick inside. It's definitely a deeper sort of nude with some rose undertones to it. So I'm excited to try this lipstick. I've wanted to try one of theirs for a while. It doesn't have any scent. It doesn't smell chemically or vanilla. Sometimes when they don't add a scent in, you can just kind of smell some of the silicones and other ingredients, which honestly don't smell that great. This is a truly unscented lipstick. So I'm also kind of excited for that. And then the last thing I got was from JCat Beauty. This is one of their 3 delicious Holograph lip creams. They had several different colors. This is the shade Moon Dust. This holographic trend just doesn't want to die, but I am actually enjoying the lip topper idea. This actually has a pretty strong holographic to it. It might actually fit the definition of holographic in the terms of like picking up all of the colors and not just being a duochrome. So yeah, it definitely goes very gold. Swatched, it definitely goes more gold than any other tone. Let's try a little bit over the top of this Smashbox shade here just to see goes almost greenish gold. It's interesting. I don't think I have anything like this. I don't know how that it's going to look over every single shade, but I'm, or every single color of lipstick rather, but I am intrigued. All right, guys. So that is everything. Lots and lots of stuff. Kind of went a little crazy, but when you end up getting things for like 20% off and then you have $125 in points to redeem, all of a sudden it's like, all oh, the makeup is free, it's free. There's some products that I don't know how I'm gonna feel about, like this I Love Mochi palette and this Catrice priming serum, and then to some degree these Makeup Revolution concealers. And then there's some products I know I'm going to, I can already tell I'm going to love, like this Bare Minerals blush, and I think this Be uh, Becca bronzer, and then I'm really, really, really interested in this Stila Shimmer and Glow shadow in this sort of pur purpley color. So this is a kind of a different video than no I normally make, or that anyone makes for that matter. You've kind of gotten a random haul and then some behind the scenes stuff. So hopefully this was enjoyable for you guys. So let me know down in the comments below what your reaction to this video was. I'm really enjoying getting to know you guys a little bit more and I love seeing your comments and your thoughts and your feedback down there. So thanks for tuning in. Hope this was fun. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.